First story. My wife betrayed me doing a soft corn, claiming it was a fitness photo shoot after giving birth to our son, then hid it from me. I only found out after her photographer mistakenly emailed her pictures to me. Now wife is begging not to divorce her, saying she didn't cheat. This is such a complicated issue, so I will do my best to make it complete but short. My wife is great friends with one of our city's high-end wedding photographers, named Gina Sixties or so. She is supremely talented and also a nice person. We have gotten huge discounts on everything from weddings to babies to family pictures. My wife recently lost all her baby weight and became really fit by following a low-carb diet and doing a natural movement workout plan. Gina asked her to come do a boudoir shoot for her so she could put my wife's pictures on her website as an example of a fit as XY mom. We had many, many discussions, and I was all for it right from the beginning because it's hot. The wife was worried about employers, friends, and family seeing them. But eventually she figured she'd worked hard. There would be no nudity, and what the hell. It's very important to know we talked about this nightly for at least a week and went over every eventuality, and I thought everything was on the table. So the pictures are stunning. Gina hired a spectacular makeup artist, and my wife looks like a supermodel. I mean, they are spectacular pictures with minimal Photoshop, too. When the pictures went up on the site, Gina sent me a very classy hard-bound book of pictures with a note. Thank you for being so cool with this. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. It is important to note the timeline here. Pictures taken in May. Pics went on the website in late June, and I got the book this week. The wife is out of town with the baby to visit her mom and dad. Late Wednesday, I got an email from Gina, which basically said happy 4th. I wanted you to go through these digital proofs to see if there were any others you liked. It's actually a link to a secure site where I have a username and password. So I logged in, and all the first series of pictures were variations on ones I'd already seen. Lingerie, implied naked, gym wear, and the like. Then it got into a series of full naked pictures, which I thought was awesome. Why didn't these make it into my book? When I clicked the next page, I could clearly see that in the thumbnails there were two people. I opened one and it's my wife in sort of an embrace that looked like the cover of a romance novel. The guy also looked like a mode. Find. 3 of 16. To log back in. But my password has been Chan. L and was super ripped. With these, I was like, okay. But with all the discussions we had, why didn't she say there would be a guy there? I'd say that series is 50 pictures long, with each one getting more and more risque. My wife ends up going from a business suit to just her pants. The guy has his underwear on in all of them, but in certain pics, he's laying on top of her to look like he's kissing her neck. His hands are definitely on her breasts. He's holding her from behind with his hand just out of shot, but it implies he's touching her crotch. By far the worst is the last picture, where it's just a picture of her butt with his face and the top of her thong in his teeth, sort of pulling it away from her body. I looked at the pictures and was absolutely stunned for 30 minutes. I emailed Gina, saying basically, Gina, what is this? This is way more than I thought it was going to be. She has not replied, and I tried to log back in, but my password has been changed, and Gina won't send me another one. I tried to call my wife, but she hasn't answered and says she's too busy to talk. I texted and had questions about what went on at the photo shoot, and she replied at first, Zinus, you like? Now she's not responding at all, so my guess is Gina told her about the slip-up, and she doesn't know what to tell me. I'm lost, literally lost. My wife had so many chances to tell me this was the plan, if it was that all along. I don't even think I would have said an outright no, but I just asked for some boundaries like don't have the guy's lips near your arse or second base. If my wife didn't know and Gina sprung this on her, why didn't she say no or even enforce her own boundaries? It looked like she was having a great time in the pictures. If these are the ones Gina accidentally sent me, are there more? Do they get like a literal hardcore? My wife is probably panicking as well right now. As I assume Gina is, neither will speak with me. My wife comes home Sunday morning. How do I even begin to have this conversation with her? What do I say when I see her? TLDR. The wife did a racy photoshoot for me and her photographer friend's website. It turns out there was at least one other series of photos that featured a young, ripped guy who had almost gotten into soft core territory. I'm so lost as to what I want to do. Update, if allowed I posted about my wife doing a boudoir slash Naked slash fitness lingerie shoot for a photographer friend of hers. Then found out there was also a male model in the shoot. The wife is home. And this is the update. I got tons of differing advice on the last post. So I guess I will on this one as well and may get ripped apart.
Anyway, so I've been sweating this since I first saw the pictures I wasn't supposed to see on Wednesday. There was almost zero contact with my wife. Part of this was because she was busy. Part of it was because they were at a lake. And part of it, as she admits now, was because she was avoiding the conversation. My wife decided to come home early, so, three hours or so ago, I got a call from her saying, I'm on my way home. We have a lot of talking to do. Can you please get us Jimmy John's? Because I'm not stopping to eat and I'm already starving. I was like, seriously, WTF. But I avoided the temptation to get into it with her on the phone, which I'm glad of. I got her sandwich. She got home an hour later. And we put our son to bed and then got into it. As best I can tell, this is her side of the story. Gina, the photographer, had mentioned that if my wife was interested, she would love to see how she shot with another friend of hers who was a guy. The wife her name is Nikki said that she was not at all interested because she was nervous enough about the workout gear. She arrived, had a glass of white wine, relaxed, did the makeup, and had a great time during the shoot. Nikki is the one who suggested she would like to do the full naked stuff, so they did that. It went really well. And the conversation came up that maybe she'd like to try shooting with the male model. Nikki swears to me that he was not present, but Gina was able to call him, and he was able to be there in an hour. Nikki says, it was a huge mistake not to call me, but she said she was so in the moment that she didn't consider all the ramifications. So the dude shows up. He's 22, 6'3", amazing build, and blah blah. But Nikki says he was an absolute professional, so much so that all the fun she was having with the solo stuff went out the window, because the guy was literally just a living mannequin. When she was shooting solo, there was dancing, laughing, and jokes. But with the guy, it was like, put your hand here. Hold. Repeat. I said I saw some of the pictures, and they didn't look like that at all. She said that there are probably also a few hundred of her looking absolutely terrified and ashamed that didn't make it into the proofs. At this point, I demanded to see all of the pictures. Nikki logged into the secure site, and there were 10 or so more past the original 50. And basically it went like a sequence from the guy pulling the underwear off with his teeth to her turning over, spreading her legs, and ending with a shot of them from the side, looking like he was taking her in the missionary position. I asked her to promise me there weren't more, and it didn't go any further than that. She said it didn't that the guy never even took off his underwear. I asked if it turned her on. She said that in a physical sense of feeling skin on skin, it did turn her on, but on an emotional level, she was terrified of what I would think and it was so business like that there was nothing organic happening at all. I told her this was all so fishy because the shoot happened in May. She's had almost six weeks to tell me, maybe more. She says that she just couldn't find the words, but was really working on it. The thing that's sort of gross is that our actual life has been amazing, and I think the correlation is about when the shoot happened. I had attributed it more to our son finally sleeping for more than three hours at a time, but now I'm not sure. Part of me thinks she was seriously turned on by the whole thing and took that out on me. I told her I wanted her to swear to me that she doesn't know this guy from prior, hasn't kept in touch with him since, and has no plans for the future. She said the guy actually brought his girlfriend with him to the shoot, and she was a gorgeous volleyball player for the local university, and she's pretty sure that he's not trading a 6'1 voluptuous volleyball player for a 30-year-old mother with a 13-month-old. I asked if the girlfriend actually watched the shoot. Nikki said the girl was in the room, but sat and scrolled through her phone and seemed bored by the whole thing. I asked who else was in the room. She said it was just Gina and her assistant, who held lights and such. After some surfing around Gina's main site and finding other things the guy had done for her, we were able to find his name and Facebook page, and he's a college student and certainly does appear to be dating a very attractive college volleyball player. I asked what Gina was going to do with those pictures, because, to me, it was crazy that Nikki was initially hesitant to even take the boudoir shots because of people seeing her take what essentially appears to be soft core in less than a week. She said that Gina had no plans for the pictures at all and that they weren't getting posted anywhere. They were just done as test shots since Gina is getting back into boudoir and couples photoshoots and the male model owed her a favor, so it was a great time to practice. I asked, why not ask me to do it? She said she didn't have a good answer for that. I asked. And obviously, Gina already made one huge mistake, sending them to me or uploading them to my private proof page. How do we know she's not going to make another huge mistake and send them to the wrong person and or forget that these were just practice and sell them to someone? Nikki said we were just going to have to trust her. I told her that I was having a really hard time trusting anyone at the moment and that I'd need more than that. Nikki said we could talk to Gina at the first opportunity on Monday. I asked if she would be willing to pay a lawyer to draw up a contract 
to keep Gina to her word. She said she would. Then we got into the reason for the secrecy. She said that she felt so guilty after the whole thing that she had no idea how to tell me, and she knew she was going to see her family this week, so she had hoped to put off the subject. I asked her how she found out I knew. She said Gina had called her late Wednesday, confessing that she had really screwed up. Nikki claims that at this point she went into panic mode and was pretty much either crying or clamming up around everyone because she felt so ashamed. I told her how much the silence almost destroyed me, and she started crying and said she was so sorry for the whole thing, and she knew she screwed up and basically begged me not to leave her, saying that she still had more love for me than she had for anyone. I told her that I believed that she loved me and that she was acknowledging her mistake, but that I felt like I was being extremely disrespected and emasculated by the whole thing. She said she could appreciate that, and would do whatever she could to make it up to me. I told her I just wasn't sure what that meant yet. She started crying again, and begged me not to make any rash decisions about leaving her. I said if she promised me she was telling the truth, and it seems like she is, then I'm not leaving her. But I'm not sure what normal will be for us now. She said she'd be willing to do whatever it takes or wait however long it takes for me to figure it out. So that is where we are. Our son woke up since his sleep schedule was messed up from the drive, so she's tending to him, and I'm writing this. I guess aside from the lie of omission about the whole thing, she's never been dishonest with me before, so I believe her about all the details. I mean, they seem so crazy as to be true, and a lie would be more like normal, if that makes any sense. But I still feel so gross about the whole thing. Another guy has touched my wife's breasts. My wife has felt another man's breath on her neck and another guy has laid on top of her in several different positions. We can never be a married couple that can say we haven't been intimate with other people. I mean, I get the professionalism of it all, but it still happened. I have to learn to live with that. I don't know. That's the update. I don't know if there's more to say or not. Maybe there will be more. I don't know. I'm trying very hard to sort through my feelings, and I'm not having much luck. The wife did a photoshoot that was supposed to be like boudoir and fitness shots for her photographer friend's website. It turned out there was also a guy involved in part of it. We've gone over what happened. I guess I believe her. But I'm not sure what to make of the whole situation. Thanks for keeping my mind from going absolutely crazy over the last few days. Edit. It's about 6am. A totally sleepless night. So based on the comments, as soon as my wife is up, I'm going to. Ask to see her phone. Tell her I'm contacting the girlfriend, as she seems like the most neutral party who can verify some details. Independently contact Gina and ask to see every single photo that was taken that day. Those are by far the most common responses. I'll update when those two are done. Edit 2. I heard my wife crying in the next room on the phone, sort of eavesdropped, and it was obvious it was Gina. Nicole was telling her that she needed to come over or send all the pictures from the whole shoot because divorce was on the line and she had to do this. Gina is on her way out of town to shoot a wedding today. But we are rushing over so she can open the studio before she leaves, so we can go through all the pictures. I told my wife I wanted to look at her phone on the way over. She said that was fine. She's packing up our son. We are taking our one-year-old son to a studio where my wife was felt up, in order to prove she didn't cheat on me. This has been the most f-ed in week of my life. I can update later. But I'm worried this is as exhausting to everyone else as it is to me. Edit 3. So here's where we are now. I looked at my wife's phone on the way over to Gina's studio. Basically, on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., there were seven missed calls from Gina on my wife's phone. Gina also started a text conversation with her about that time that said, Please call me. We really need to talk. I crossed that with my email to Gina, which said, This is way more than I thought it was going to be, which I sent at about 6.15 that same day. If you remember, in those 15 minutes I tried to call my wife. She told me she was too busy to talk. I texted her. I wanted to know what happened in the photo shoot. In those 15 minutes, Nikki still thought I didn't know because she texted back. Zinus, you like? So clearly, when Gina's text started rolling in, she knew that I knew. So their text conversation basically went like this. I really screwed up. Not you, lol. No, this is serious. Please call. I can't now. What's wrong? I accidentally put those pictures with Craig up on the Thomas preview site. What? Please listen. I need to know what you want me to do. I don't understand. Tommy just emailed me about the shoot, not being what he thought it was. How would he know? You haven't told him yet. No, I have not planned on it for a while. SHT, that's what I thought. I'm still lost. 
He's seen the pics of you and Craig. Please follow me. What? How? I'm so sorry. I was rushing to get proofs out, and I accidentally uploaded most of them to his preview site. What's most? I mean almost all. Oh, my god, Gina. Oh, my god. What do you want me to do? I'm out of town. I can't leave until Saturday. No. What do I do? I don't know. He's going to effing flip out. I can change his password so he can't get back in. What if he copies them? Can't. Copy protected. Please do that while I think. I'm so sorry, Nicole. This was a huge accident. Do you want me to talk to him? No, this better come from me. But I'm going to throw up. I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. And that was pretty much the only communication between them no other calls or anything. Gina texted her every day. Are you okay? Type stuff. But Nick never responded. Nikki did text her that she was leaving Saturday morning, but nothing else. So then we got to the studio, and Gina was rushing around like crazy because she was driving for two hours to do a wedding. I asked her to please talk to me about what she was thinking. So she took like five minutes and said that she was so sorry that the thoughts just got away from her. And Nikki was doing such an amazing job that it seemed like a great idea at the time. I was at a loss for words, so I didn't ask any more questions. Gina set us up on her main computer and opened the file folder of every single one of Nikki's pictures from that day, including the ones not included in the proofs. I think it was exactly 12-13 pictures from everything. I scrolled through every image and got to the couple shots. I could very clearly tell that the mood had changed in the throwaway pictures from solo to couple in all the solo shots. Nick was smiling, laughing, and having a good time, even if the picture didn't turn out. But in the couple shots, I could clearly see that she was nervous, she wasn't having fun and she had that same timid, almost annoyed face I've seen on her a million times. I'd say in the couple section. It took ten pictures to come up with one that looked halfway decent, where her face didn't look like she was being interrogated, and it got worse as she was more and more undressed. You can clearly see that she has a look of genuine disgust when the guy touches her breasts, and it takes a long time for her to make those shots work. There's also a little interlude where I guess Nikki went into the dressing room to compose herself, so Gina took similar shots, but with clothes on her. He was still in his underwear with the guy and his girlfriend, and it's very obvious that they both have experience doing this sort of thing. You can also see that when Nick is coming out of the dressing room, Gina takes pictures of her alone, trying to get the spark back from the solo stuff. And in those pictures, you can see the girlfriend in the background looking bored as SHT on her phone. After the break, Nikki seemed to be a little more relaxed, and that's where they go into him lying down on her back, which goes into the teeth thing, and into the very suggestive stuff where it appears he's initiating SX. It takes an abrupt end. And then there's about a dozen shots of everyone who was present doing things like flipping the camera off, sticking their tongues out, and that sort of thing. The weirdest one is of Nikki in a bathrobe and the girlfriend both hugging the model with smiles on their faces. She says she asked for that one because it just seemed like a cute shot for everyone to say. We're all cool with each other. I was very careful to check the sequencing of the pictures Gina has them all numerically titled with date a code for customer, and location, then series number, and there wasn't a single picture missing. It would have been an epic undertaking for Gina to rename 1,000 pictures to eliminate ones that were worse than what I already saw, so I'm 99% convinced I saw everything. So now, more than ever, I'm convinced my wife is telling me the truth about what actually happened. I don't think there was cheating or his ex. Lots of people would consider what happened cheating. I think it was professional. I think it was spur of the moment when Nikki said she would like to try the couple's stuff. The girlfriend was definitely there, so I see no reason to drag her into this. The things I'm still so uncomfortable with. Would she have ever really told me had Gina not accidentally shown me those pictures? Why six freaking weeks? I think my wife was uncomfortable in the moment, but I think reflection allowed her to realize that she actually really enjoyed the experience. I'm more convinced of this than ever with that shot of her with a huge smile where she and the girlfriend almost look like they are members of a burgeoning harem dedicated to Hotab's McCool. But having said that, I do think she was embarrassed by initiating the shoot, and she was very scared of what my reaction was going to be. But it says a lot that she didn't trust me to tell me. So that's where we are now. I guess I'm glad I got to see the pictures, but I don't know if it really cleared anything up. I think she's telling me a version of the truth that's mostly factual. But how the F can I ever know? I'm not leaving her or divorcing her based on what I know now. Part of me is very happy for her that she had a good time. I'm not like the fun police or anything, but I still feel terrible about the whole thing overall. Second and last update. I'm ready to try and put this behind me. 
I'm the guy who found out my wife did some very racy, almost softcore adultery photoshoots and hid them from me for six weeks. Thank you very much for keeping me sane over the past five days. First of all, let me say that I really, really appreciate everyone helping me out. I honestly don't know what I would have done had I not had a place to vent, argue the facts, and bounce things off of. When the other sub removed my post and banned me for just asking why, I really thought I was going to lose my mind because my thoughts were racing a million miles a minute. A very, very sincere thank you. So if you recall from one of my updates, Nikki wife agreed that we would sit down with Gina photographer today and get her full side of the story. I spoke with her yesterday, but that was only long enough for her to open the building, get her computer booted up, and then get on the road for her shoot. I told my wife that I would like to talk to Gina alone at first, and she said she had no problems with that. So Gina was very affable and friendly when we sat down at her desk. I asked her if she understood why I was having such a hard time with this. Gina basically said that she did, and she was very, very sorry for the way things shook out. I asked her what her version of shook out was. It more or less matched Nikki's version in that she had mentioned Nick shooting with the guy about a week prior to the boudoir shoot. Nick had said absolutely not. When the shoot day came, they had an absolutely great time. Nikki suggested they do full naked in what would be a Christmas present for me. And Gina said Nikki was even more relaxed naked. So she reintroduced the idea of shooting with her friend Craig Hotabs McCool. Nikki said, what the hell? Let's do it. Hotabs McCool was in class. They drank wine while waiting for him. And all were good and buzzed by the time he showed up. He brought his girlfriend, Gina, who has shot for some sort of collegiate volleyball all-star thing and everyone was fast friends. Gina had the idea of making it like a visual romance novel where the hot businesswoman would succumb to Hotabs McCool's advances mission accomplished. She said Nikki went from having a great time to being super nervous, and Gina said she had to really press to get her to open up pun intended. Probably not, but I noticed the phrasing. But Nikki did very well, so that's that. I asked her to promise me that there's no other pictures, and Gina said absolutely not that you can even look in the metadata if needed to see that everything is in a nice, complete sequence that lasted about an hour. I asked Gina why Nikki said that if this guy's girlfriend already knew how to do this, why not just use her? Remember, GF did the same poses as Nick did while Nick was taking a break. Gina said she just loved shooting with Nikki, and as a photographer, a series of SXY shots where the couple is mismatched is much more interesting than just two good-looking college kids. So that all seemed on the up and up I mean, it wasn't new news. I had heard that all before. Gina promised me that she wasn't going to do anything with the pictures, and that it really was just a fun session with friends. I don't know what I was thinking, but I asked if I could have a hard drive of all the pictures, and Gina said that usually she would never do that. But because we had been friends for so long, and the situation was so unique, I could. I have no idea why I asked for them. Maybe I can embarrass Nikki with them someday as a prank, as in, hey, Remember that time you almost f ed that college kid? Here's a picture. Lol right? Just kidding, I guess. Nikki came into the office crying and apologizing to both of us, saying that it was her fault, and she felt terrible about the whole thing. Gina was pretty contrite as well, saying that she probably used her friendship with Nikki to push the moment way more than was professionally acceptable. I was able to half-heartedly accept Gina's apology, but I'm just not sure I'm understanding it yet. So we left. And Nikki again begged me not to make any rash decisions about our future. I told her that I'd already said that if everything up to this point was the truth, then I'm not leaving. But I can't make any promises as to what normal will be for us now. She said that was okay and recommended that we seek a marriage counselor. I told her that would be great, and I'd make every session. She has been a pretty big emotional wreck since she got home on Saturday. And I don't think she's slept at all I haven't. She's been trying very hard to be physical with me, with things like holding my hand, hugging me, sitting next to me on the couch, and that sort of thing. I've been trying to reciprocate, but I'm having a very hard time with it. I know she's hurting, and I should be the one to comfort her, and I'm doing the best I can. Here's the thing that a lot of you may disagree with, and that's fine. I feel that if I'm going to stay in this marriage, I need to stay in the marriage 100%. I'm not going to be her warden. I'm not going to ask her to prove where she is, or who she's hanging out with. And I'm not going to look through her phone. I felt gross doing it yesterday, though it was helpful, and I couldn't bring myself to do it again. I feel that if we're married, then we're married. This isn't something to be brought up in an argument. Eh, what about that time you? Type thing, or an excuse for me to go out and creep on hot Instagram girls. If I'm staying, I'm staying 100%.
I can't say with certainty that I can force myself to stick to this, because Nikki can be a nag from hell and the temptation to pull up a photo and say, why didn't I remember to get gas? Remember that time Hotabs McCool's 9-inch DCK was only separated from your arse by fabric? Maybe too much to resist. Yeah, I still have a little spite in me. But that last crack aside, she's been through a lot. And the mother of my adorable little kid deserves love and compassion. Even if, a lot has been of her own making. So I'm going to go see a movie tonight without her. Be mad. Call her all sorts of names in my head. Scream, punch my steering wheel, throw rocks into the river. Have some scotch, get in a bar fight, whatever. Then tomorrow I'm getting up. And I'm going to be the husband I was before she left last Sunday. I'm also going to hit Facebook, gym up, and delete a lawyer wasn't my line. But whoever said it on one of the posts really made me laugh. But seriously, in addition to Nikki messing up, this little episode has shown me that I've become a squishy 50-year-old despite the fact that I'm 30. A huge reason Nikki and Gina didn't even think to ask me to participate in that shoot is that I don't even resemble a guy who could be with my wife anymore. She's very attractive, and while I've got a decent base to work with, I'm not anymore. She looks better than she did in the wedding pictures Gina took for us. I look far worse. So if I'm going to be in this marriage 100%, I also need to be 100% myself. Or the person I was when I was a practicing purple belt in BJJ or a walk-on to my college baseball team. That's been the hardest, but probably the most productive part of this whole situation. I have to look myself in the mirror and admit. Your wife did a softcore adultery shoot, and while she still loves you, you've let yourself go so bad that she didn't even think to include you. So I've already signed back up for BJJ tomorrow. And I'm going to talk to my professor about being an instructor again. I'm going to join Nikki in her paleo craziness, and maybe even her funky arse Movnat class. I hope to use this episode to make myself a better person. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And a serious thank you again. Edit 1 in the morning. So this has been such a crazy experience. And I've seen the absolute best and worst of Reddit. From god-awful power-hungry mods, red pillars, and cells, pervs, and edgelords. But there were also some truly helpful people who genuinely seemed to care about a stranger and his wife, whether they agreed with his course of action or not. PMs and comments are still rolling in, and I'll keep responding if people are interested in my nonsense. Just to put this to rest from the PMs, I'm not sharing the pictures. I'm not linking the Gina's page. You're going to have to take my word for it Nikki is as cute as I say. If you had to do that old game of, what celebrity do you resemble? There's a adultery star named Lana Rhodes who has a striking resemblance to her face ironic. Nick has black hair and striking blue eyes. He is fit now and not super curvy, but balanced. If that makes sense, for those who keep asking, that's the best I'm going to do. And yes, I'm bragging that my wife is quite hot. I look like smashed SHT served on a cracker. But my self-esteem is at an all-time low. And I'm hungover like crazy. Uber is taking forever. And I have to get my car and still get to work. And I'm at least two hours late now. I'm going to close the door to my office and sleep this off. Have a good one, everyone. Update. So out of the blue, I logged into this account because I needed a throwaway. And even though this saga was almost five months ago, there were six requests for updates in the inbox. So here goes. Basically, everything is great between my wife and me. Like I said in the last update above, I was still upset by the whole thing, but I was going to put it all behind me. And I did just that. I didn't become her zookeeper. I never asked to check her phone. And I never asked her to check in with me other than the obvious that affected her or our kids' safety. I had a few rough days in the immediate aftermath of all this. But as life began to move forward, and we had other issues hot water heater going out, minor car problems, strep throat, this sort of faded into the background. I guess if I can give one piece of advice that I learned from all this, is that if you are going to stay with a person after they've screwed up, stay with them, and don't become their keeper. I still love my wife very much, and she knows that she messed up. But her love for me has never been in doubt, and I'm so glad that I never gave her a reason to stop loving me. One thing that people really keyed in on was my own lack of respect. Well, one thing I did do was really focus on getting myself back into physical shape after a pretty long, slow decline. Five months later, I'm back into Brazilian jiu-jitsu with a vengeance. I've lost almost 30 pounds and I'm living a mostly keto lifestyle with a cheat day on Sundays. I feel and look better than I have in years. And a side benefit of that is that our sexual life has taken off like crazy, and I'm loving it. My wife definitely learned that one of her kinks is being naughty in front of a camera. So our verb has gotten to see some things that aren't appropriate for school or church, if you catch my meaning. We love to talk about starting up an amateur page on Adolphip, 
But I think talking about it is just part of the fun, and not something we will really ever do. So all is well in our household. Thank you everyone for keeping up with our story. Things are good. And I appreciate all the advice that I got on those first three posts. Merry Xmas. The TLDR. I knew my wife was doing a Lingiria boudoir shoot for her photographer friend. I did not know that her friend basically talked her into doing about 50 nude shots with a younger model who was wearing underwear. My wife hid this from me. I found the shots when the photographer basically accidentally emailed them to me. Wife and I basically decided to work things out. Second story. My wife said I'm worth it for her anymore. And she is out of my league. Listening to her friends after she got promoted and earns more. Saying she deserves a man who is worth the rich lifestyle she has. And how she felt humiliated in front of her friend, who saw her with someone like me and my car. I know I won't probably get anything meaningful from Reddit. But at this stage of life, I don't have a single soul to talk to. I met my wife when I was 15 in high school. She was 17. That latter part of my teenage years was probably the hardest of my life. Since in half a year, I lost my mother. I never knew my dad. So she was the only thing I could consider family. At that time, I and my wife were only friends. But she was there for me and grieved with me. I think I started developing feelings for her during that time. We started dating when I was 17. And we got married seven years later. For context, my wife was very frugal and unmaterialistic. She never cared about clothes, makeup, brands, cars, etc. Always spending money at thrift shops or during sales on whatever she liked. I remember trying to impress her with my 370Z just for her to react with. What car is this? A Corolla. So yeah, I think you get the type. But that's what I liked about her the most. And also, she was the most caring person I ever knew. In our family, she's the successful one, always working for big corporations. Regarding myself, I always worked as a community first responder for my local hospital. The salary wasn't high, but I loved my job, helping as many people as I could. Fast forward. Two years ago, she received an offer from an important company for an executive position, offering four yes, four times her salary, and let me tell you, her salary wasn't bad by any means. But we should have had to move to a different city. At first, I was doubtful, since that would have meant losing my job and not being sure if I could have contributed financially to our family for an indefinite time period. But she said that she could have sustained the family effortlessly with this new job. And for that time I could have looked after the house and groceries till I could have found a new job. Since she was so enthusiastic, I accepted. I was happy to support my wife's career. Well, the best way I can put it is that my wife underwent a crazy transformation. Some Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type things, if you know what I mean. She started caring more and more about luxury brands, jewels, cars, etc. I don't think you can quite imagine my disbelief at seeing her come back home with a Versace bag after seeing her for years wearing $10 coats from our local thrift shop. She also started hanging out with her new female co-workers a lot. My wife isn't very extroverted or very social, so that was quite the shock. But I was very, very happy for her. I thought that she finally found her dimension after years of struggling. But that happiness started fading after she started coming home way later every day. And later. And later. It was a miracle to be able to talk to her for 10 minutes a day. I thought it was very busy with work since being an executive means lots of work. Until she started posting lots of photos of her, with her co-workers drinking, going shopping, and stuff. The fun part is that she never finds time to reply to my text. But she always has a minute to post photos. And when she replies, she says that she's, working. She also literally stopped saying things to me. Have you ever experienced your wife or husband going to work with an Audi A3, and then coming back home with a Porsche Macon GTS? Well, I did, and let me tell you, it's no fun. I confronted her on whether it was a business-issued car, which it isn't, and then on why she spent so much money on a car when she didn't care, not even a little, about cars. Her passive, aggressive response was that it's her money, and that she was entitled to do as she pleased. Or have you experienced not seeing your wife or husband come back home for a night, and not replying to text messages just to receive a call, the following afternoon saying that she forgot to tell me that she left for a business trip? Well, I hope you haven't but the worst was when she invited me to lunch with her coworkers. I was very happy, because that was the first time we were doing something together in months, and I thought that what I'd experienced before was only a phase, and that it had all ended. My wife left first, because she had work to do, so I dressed up nicely and left two hours later for the scheduled restaurant. For context, I sold my 370Z years ago, because I didn't need a sports car anymore, so my daily driver is a very frugal Renault Clio. 
I like it. And since I don't need that much, I don't have reasons to upgrade to a higher priced model or brand. Well, I get to the restaurant, park my car in front of it, and get inside just to see my wife staring at me like she is horror stricken. She gets up from the table and takes me outside of the restaurant, then proceeds to literally insult me for parking my Clio in front of the restaurant and in front of her table, saying that I embarrassed her and that I should have parked it somewhere hidden. I was completely at a loss for words. I asked her why, and she said that it was a cheap, non luxury car not representative of her lifestyle. She then gets back inside the restaurant, warning me not to embarrass her like this again. I attended the rest of the lunch in shock. That day, I realized that the girl I had by my side wasn't my wife. It wasn't the girl I married anymore. My wife is now out of the house, celebrating a great year for the company, and I'm here at home writing this with the divorce papers in front of me. I don't think I can handle this situation anymore. I tried lots and lots of time to talk to her, to tell her how I feel to tell her that she changed, that she's not the same woman I knew. But she just doesn't listen. She always says that she has no time, and that she needs to work. Or she tries to minimize the situation by saying that it's not true, and that she never changed. She wanted kids, but now she doesn't want them anymore, saying that they would steal her time from her career. She wanted to travel, but now she doesn't want to do it for the same reason. Is she really the same woman I married? But still, I can't bring myself to talk about divorce with her. Most likely because I hope that somewhere hidden inside of her, there's still the woman I loved and still love. Even if this doesn't seem to be the case. Update. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who reached out to me in the comments or in DMs. I really appreciated it, and it helped me retain my composure and mental clarity. I'm sorry I couldn't reply to you all, but I tried to read everything, and I really appreciate all of you. Well, after that business party, my wife didn't come back home. I tried contacting her since I was very worried, but she didn't pick up the phone, not even once. She came back home in the morning, exactly when I was about to leave for her workplace to ask about her. I asked her what happened, and she said she stayed at this female co-worker's house since she drank a lot, and she was in no condition to drive fair enough. I told her that she could have sent me a text to warn me, and that I would have gone to get her. Her response was, With what? The Clio. I stood there in silence and she later said that she forgot about warning me. I asked how she was feeling, only to be answered in monosyllables. We thought about our own business for a while. Then she came to me and said she had something to discuss. I tell her that I have something to discuss with her too. And well, would you look at that? She asked for a divorce. I wasn't expecting that at all. I asked her why, and her reply was that after talking to her friends, she understood that I wasn't fit to be her husband, that we have different values and different lifestyles and that she deserves a man of similar worth compared to her. She was just waiting for the right time to bring it up, and after the party, she made up her mind. I'm going to be completely honest. That was a low blow, but I just smiled at her. I tried talking to her, proposing to separate for a while to see how things went. I even proposed couple therapy, like someone suggested. But she was dead set on it, so I calmly told her everything I needed to say, from the fact that I was thinking about divorce too to the fact that I felt like she changed, Concluding by saying that I'm sure she will find an awesome man since I know her worth having been her husband for more than nine years. But that I know what I'm worth too. We decided to separate for the moment. And we will arrange the divorce later on since she has no time now. But we have a verbal agreement on some things. I decided to go back to my hometown to relax and to decide what's next for me. I should be able to regain my previous position in the hospital. But it's all to see. Also, one of my friends there offered to host me until I found housing. I'm really grateful to him. But well, I understood that my wife couldn't care less about me when the longest discussion we had concerned who was taking the dog. For context, we got him a month after moving since she always wanted one to keep me some company. But in two years, she probably spent the equivalent of two hours with him. I always took care of him. And well, he's been a more than loyal companion in those two years. So, she literally made a fuss about the fact that I couldn't take the dog with me for maybe half an hour or so. I told her that I didn't care at all. I was taking him with me since she doesn't have time to care for him, and it was very strange for her to say those things when she hadn't cared even a bit about him for two years. So I packed the necessary, and before leaving, I asked her if she was cheating on me, and she denied it. And I will trust her on that. I read a lot of people in the previous post talking about hiring a PI, but I'm not going to do that. I trust what she said, and even if it wasn't the truth, I honestly don't want to hear anything about it. It would only make me feel worse. I feel calm, 
but inside I feel like I've lost an important piece of myself. The things she said didn't hurt me initially. However, the more I think about them, the more heartbroken I feel. But I'm trying to focus on nicer thoughts, like meeting one of my old friends, whom I haven't seen in a long time. I'm still trying to process everything. It all happened so fast. Though I must say that seeing my dog so happy inside the Clio brightened up my mood a lot. He loves car rides. Even if things went down this road, I still wish her all the best. I could never forget what she did back then for me, and in general in those 16 years spent together as a couple. I may do another update in the future about how things went. But for now, goodbye. I will take some time to focus on myself and the upcoming divorce. Again, thanks to everyone. Take care. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.